Uh, thanks for having me. Um, so uh, the, uh, the title is uh, unintentional. I didn't know who the, about what the uh, earlier keynote speaker was going to talk about. But I want to discuss um, some of the work that we've been doing on something we call Exposome Data Warehouse. So uh, just as a high level, the idea is that we essentially want to build a sort of search engine that can connect environmental data to, um, to uh, disease and health. So uh, I'm uh, with, uh, I'm Chirag Lakhani. I'm part of the Department of Biomedical Informatics in Chirag Patel's group. So we're really interested in patients and understanding sort of environmental determinants that affect health essentially. So um, coming from sort of a informatics perspective, uh, we're interested in a lot of omics data as well as environmental data. So from a first order, um, one way we can think of this is a simple equation, which is uh, P, which uh, is phenotype. So that you could think of that as uh, data, which is about diseases, uh, as well as molecular phenotypes like gene expression. So uh, it, it's sort of a combination of both uh, genes, genetic information, uh, such as genetic variants, as well as uh, environmental information, which is a lot broader. Um, things like infectious agents, the type of nutrients that you intake, your diet, et cetera, uh, drugs that you take. So those are all kind of environmental factors. Um, so the thing is that when you think about genetics data, uh, that's very, uh, there's a lot of great technology that has been developed, especially with the Human Genome Project. You have SNP chips, which can uh, survey millions of genetic variants. You have whole genome sequencing, lots of great methods, and there are very robust tools like these gen genome-wide association studies that can try to build these associations between diseases and genetic variants. But when you think about the environment, it's a lot more difficult. So um, first of all, there's no real way of, in a very systematic way, of actually determining all the environmental exposures and broadly even defining a lot of what the environment is when you want to think of it in the context of how does it affect your health. So, um, so one of the things that we're really interested in is really understanding, quantifying this E and, and, and understanding it in relation to uh, this P, the phenotypes. So um, how do we actually kind of drive this? So before we get into building very sophisticated models, the most important thing here is to actually be able to do this sort of linkage. So um, one of the things, so we want to connect E to P, and then which will then ultimately be able to allow you to do modeling and really build these sophisticated tools we, you know, that were talked about before in terms of how you uh, sort of really understand you know, how these things uh, kind of come into play. So the first thing is I want to just sort of just, uh, we're working with, uh, in, our, in our spoke with Naomi El Haddad, who's part of this Odyssey group, um, and which is Odyssey is this uh, data, uh, healthcare data resource, and I'll explain a little bit but uh, in a second uh, more about what it is, but it, ha it has this great network of uh, healthcare data sets throughout the, uh, the country. So um, specifically, uh, specifically what you get is a lot of phenotypic information through Odyssey. So uh, it's basically trying to, you have one is for millions of patients, you have a lot of longitudinal data, which comes from uh, their healthcare records. Um, so specifically like disease diagnosis, um, uh, prescriptions, lab reports, things like that. Uh, also, uh, you know, this is data that which is, you're just getting basically from uh, the in, uh, health IT. So, you know, you, so you go to the doctor, you, this data has been collected, you know, whatever lab tests you have done. And it's sitting there waiting to be used, but uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, it's more of a headache for the doctor and it's not really actually being beneficial. And the idea of Odyssey is to, uh, A, uh, like it's sitting there and what we want to do, what Odyssey essentially does is it tries to build a common data model in which you can suck the data from these uh, healthcare IT systems to a common data model, which is basically the same model that you could use in any of these institutions essentially. So, um, so that's, that's where we imagine we're getting this sort of phenotypic data from. Um, but a, a much more, well, and so that's sort of something that Odyssey is sort of contributing to this field. But, um, but the other issue is also how do you get environmental data? So, um, and if you think about like what are the types of environmental data, 
uh, that you want to look at. Um, one of the, so th there's, it, it's a very broad thing, but one of the things that we're looking to do is sort of focus on what we call external exposure data. And what that basically means is we're interested in um, looking at data not about a per particular person, but about geography, so based on where you live. So um, that data uh, can come from a lot of different sources. So one would be NOAA data, um, which, which is sort of like climate, you know, based on where you live, the type of climate that you live in. Um, also, there are other uh, data sets like uh, NASA has a lot of like uh, sort of like air atmospheric profiling, that sort of data. Um, there's also data from the EPA where you might get information like pollution. Um, so like there's a, they have a lot of great data like uh, EPA air quality survey data, uh, a lot of pollutants, things like that. And also there's socioeconomic data. So you have a uh, very detailed, a uh, lot of great socioeconomic information that comes from the American Community Survey. Um, and then also data that comes from like the CDC, uh, as well as like the USDA Food Atlas, which tells you about how far you are from, uh, you know, like uh, grocery stores, things like that. So that's all very rich data that can really tell you something about the environment. Now, the issue is um, if you, so if you think about it from a, a, the perspective of a, a patient, these data, they have different geographic t and temporal kind of um, uh, sort of resolution. So if, if I'm a patient um, and I live uh, in this uh, zip code here, uh, and say I want to know a lot about the types of, uh, about all these sort of environmental exposures, one of the issues that you have is that this data c comes from different geographic resolutions. So if I live in the zip code, I may want to get um, sort of daily AQI information. And that may come from on a county level. That's not based on your zip code. But if I want to get uh, EPA data, that may come from a sensor which is nearby. And, if I, and, and the census data may come from the zip code that I live in. But these are all different geographic kind of resolutions. And, and there has to be a way of sort of tying these together. And uh, sorry, and so so these are the tip, you know so just imagine different data sets they have different geographic temporal uh, geographic resolutions as well as like some could be on a monthly you could be measuring things on a monthly basis some could the census uh, data comes from on a five year basis so so there's a lot of sort of like so that makes that makes these uh, a much more challenging problem essentially. So, and then if you think about this from a population level, if we have this data coming from Odyssey, you know, you have all this patient information, how do we go about annotating it with these sort of data sets from the EPA or the census or from NOAA essentially? So, so our goal is to, act, you know, so like, can we do something about this? And uh, so here to report, yes, we can. Um, so what can we do? So. Um, this slide's a little bit of a painful slide because this is like three years of work that I'm sort of all distilling into one slide here. But um, what we did is we built this thing which we call Exposome Data Warehouse. And the idea here is that we have these different data sets and we, we built a process which can sort of, sort of A, uh, ingest them, build uh, ETL pro uh, processes to eventually go into a central data, uh, database which is this uh, a post GIS uh, database we've created. And then, um, so that's sort of just a way of storing it. So we've built a common data model that allows all these, uh, allows all these data to be in the same uh, database essentially in a way that you can s uh, systematically integrate over them. Um, and if you want to know a little bit, I'll, I'll say a little bit more in a, a, a second, but if you want to know more about the details of our data model, we're going to have a breakout session uh, later today where we'll really go into more of the details about it. But um, so, so that's like just the storing the data. Then the next part is like, how do we go about accessing it? And we've built a few ways. One is uh, we're, we've built our API uh, queer, uh, interface, which uh, all, all of this is sort of being hosted on AWS, but we plan to also uh, move it to Microsoft. Uh, a lot of the technologies we're using are, are, are in both cloud uh, platforms. But we built this um, API, which is using this AWS Lambda, which allows you to have a lot of scalability and uh, it allows you to really, in a very simple way, get that data. And we plan to create more tools such as Shiny apps that are sit on top of it um, if you're not a programmer uh, which in, uh, that where you can still access that data. 
Another way is by just taking the raw data and creating a, a database dump that we will you know, store on like an S3 bucket, which anyone can download and then create into their own infra put in their own infrastructure. So if you have private data that you can't like send off to, through the internet, you can put it within your own environment and you can st still use our data. And what we're, hope we're hoping to uh, create more sort of ways of sort of doing that and also integrating with Odyssey. Um, so those are things that are in the, and, and we'd love to get your feedback about, uh, about this as well. So let me uh, just show, show you a little bit about um, how, how do you go about trying to uh, get this data in a, in a programmatic way. So uh, Shreyas Bave is one of, uh, he's been, uh, he's a talented undergrad that's been in our group that's uh, been helping with this. And he developed this API which allows you to, if we take, if we imagine that patient that I showed you, uh, basically, you know, they live, uh, we, we, you can basically put this information um, into this, uh, in, in, as a JSON call into this API. So the one, the first thing you'll do is you'll put the location of the individual. So here it's like 28202, and then you, you give it a time range. You say, these, uh, this is the time range for this patient, essentially. And then you can, um, uh, you know, give these different types of data that you want. So you want a particular type of uh, EPA values. So you may want to know the PM 2.5 exposure that this patient has had, uh, which uh, come and, and you want the mean of it uh, on a daily basis or something. Uh, from NOAA, you may want to know what is the average temperature exposure that they've had uh, during this time range. And from the census, you may want to know like what is the median income for where they live. So, so the, the, the great thing is you can put this all into one query in a very simple kind of JSON kind of structure, and then what you get is you get all that data back. So, so here, so you, what you're going to get are just lots of rows of data that, uh, that correspond to the queries that you ran, essentially. So here, you're, this is one row of that data. So, uh, so in this case, uh, you're looking at EPA PM 2.5, you can see that you, you're getting it, here. There's something you can see, which is called the parent shape code. That's uh, the data that you put into it, um, as well as like the raw values. So the raw values are um, coming from uh, data, essentially. And then you have information such as like what what are the measurements? Like what what is the, how was this measured? Um, and so you you get all this metadata as well. And, um, and, you, and we, you can get these for all these different values. So you can get that for, for this NOAA data. Um, you're, you're getting the same type of information as well as from the census. So here you get the medium family income for that zip code as well as uh, like, you know, how was that measured? It was measured in uh, 2013 inflate, uh, you know, uh, inflation adjusted dollars. So you have, you're, you're, we're trying to give you as much data as possible and, and try to give it to you in an agnostic way where you can then later process it in, in whatever way you need to for whatever purposes you need to. Um, so, 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 you know, what we think is that this is, can become a enable, powerful enabling tool for doing some interesting research. So one of the things that um, has historically has been a very influential study is this, uh, it's called the five cities uh, or six cities uh, study which uh, this was uh, back in like the early 90s, in which the uh, uh, professor at Harvard uh, um, basically looked at the association of mortality with uh, air pollution. And they found that there was a significant air pollution. Um, and, and this is, you know, this is a very monumental study in the epidemiological community. And, you know, you have to think about like, you know, it required a lot of work to probably process all this data. So now, but the great thing is we can now scale this up. So now the CDC has published this CDC 500 cities data. And what we can do is we can now in a very high throughput manner start taking that data and linking it very easily to all kinds of different measures, not just PM 2.5, but all kinds of other environmental pollutants. Uh, we can get information about the, uh, the demographic information for these cities. Uh, we can get, uh, you know, uh, uh, climate data. So, and you can do that, you know, that friction has been eliminated essentially. We're trying to, uh, we're really trying to eliminate that friction so that you're able to uh, get that data in a very uh, simple way. And, and this is some, uh, a shiny app that Shreyas has created where he basically was able to mash up these data sets uh, with 500 cities with all these different, you can, you can, you know, select 
in a very simple manner, uh, you know, whatever EPA uh, variables and NOAA variables, and you can just get these, uh, you know, in a, in a much easier way. So, um, so what I basically just explained to you is a little bit about um, this infrastructure that we've built, uh, but it's, this is part of a larger kind of, um, part of a larger uh, goal in, uh, of our spoke is uh, f also to then connect it to the electronic medical records. So that's where we plan on working with Odyssey to really be able to uh, build tools which can work within their environment, uh, which allow you to annotate this sort of data um, within, within the Odyssey network, uh, as well as uh, hopefully we, we like to engage with the broader community. We know that this could be useful not only in, um, in, in, in the healthcare setting, but economics, political science. So we think this is, could be a tool that could be useful for a lot of people, so we're hoping to engage with the community. Uh, and also, um, just sort of going back to the earlier talk, you know, there was some talk about you know, going away from associations to try to understand some of the causal you know, me mechanisms from the healthcare, especially for our, from our perspective, from the healthcare perspective. And so we're working with um, Vasant Hanavar and Greg Cooper, who are at uh, University of Pittsburgh and uh, Penn State, to build like causal analytic tools that can actually really actually help us do that kind of stuff. So, um, so, so Greg has, he's worked on a lot of like causal, causal uh, search type of uh, things in, um, he's at the University of Pittsburgh and Vasant has done a lot of work in uh, case crossover analysis and uh, these uh, uh, sort of more causal type of uh, analysis uh, for these data sets and we're hoping to kind of all kind of work together to really try to sort of build best practices as well as sort of uh, uh, when it comes to like kind of looking at this association of environmental factors that affect disease. Um, so uh, please do come to our breakout session. We'll talk a, a lot more about uh, the data model that, uh, as well as um, try to give you a hands-on kind of in, uh, introduction to uh, using SQL, uh, the, the SQL interface for how you can query this data, uh, as well as uh, how the API works. Uh, as well as, well, and we may, if we have time, we'll get into this, but we may not have enough time to ha uh, the, the data app that uh, Shreyas has created. So this will all be led by Shreyas uh, in the afternoon session. Um, so thank you. Um, finally, I want to thank, uh, uh, so I'm part of Chirag's group. Uh, Shreyas has been very instrumental uh, uh, with this work, as well as Andrew, uh, uh, Braden Tierney, and Rolando Acosta. Um, also Naomi, um, Vasant, Greg, and George Herbstack, as well as Renee, uh, Kathleen, and um, Katie. Yeah, so that's, uh, so, so, uh, so what I neglected was that we're, what we're utilizing is uh, a GIS enabled database. So that allows, so what we store in our data, and that's something that we'll probably get into a lot more um, in, the, in, the, in the breakout session, but basically every piece of data has like a particular geometry associated to it. Uh, and, and we can do these kind of what you would call spatial joins. So you can say like, if I live in a zip code, I wanna know like find all sensors within a 60 kilometer radius and you can build, because every piece of data has a, a geometry associated, you can use the tools of GIS uh, and in particular using our post GIS database to actually get those sort of linkages. You um, had a map up earlier and you had different colored dots on it. Uh, I just wondered what the decode for the colors on the dots were. Uh, th uh, this that, one? Yes. Uh, th so there are like different types of data. So, uh, so I, uh, uh, I think, so, so here you have basically uh, so, so like uh, there are sensor, there are different types of sensors. So some of the sensors are EPA sensors and some sensors are for NOAA. And then some sensors are, uh, or are there locations for the, uh, the cities that, uh, for the 500. So they're basically three different data sets kind of mashed up together. 
and they're uh, they're representing the different sensors associated to them. Thank you.